welcome on into Courtside. I'm your host, Courtney Webb. This is a digital series about QVC entrepreneurs, and we have one that's both on QVC and our sister company, HSN, and that's Miss Patricia Nash. Patricia, welcome on in. Oh, well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're so happy to have you here, especially because I want to hear more about your story. We only get so much time on air to hear the background, but it's your anniversary. Is that right for the brand? Yeah, 10th anniversary. What a year to be celebrating a 10th anniversary. But hey, I'll take it. We'll get through it and we'll move on. That is so true. So tell me a little bit about how you got into the handbag making business. Not only are you making premier bags that we can shop on QVC.com right now, but right. you began designing bags before you started for yourself. Is that right? Yeah, I've been in this industry over 25 years. <laughs> Cover my mouth. Um but, uh, and everyone would often say over, especially like the last 15 years, so five years before I got started, why don't you do your own brand? And I'd often say, you know, if I could find something really special, different, not the same, that's all out there, then I would. But otherwise, I just don't think we need another handbag brand out there or accessories or footwear, whatever it was. And, um, you know, it, what happened was I, I didn't realize that I had been collecting all these bags all these years, like frame bags and old leather bags and handcrafted bags. And then I was helping my mom clean out her closet that she lived in the home for 50 years, our childhood home, mm -hmm. and found this bag. It was wrapped up and carefully taken care of 50 years. And it was leather and it was hand tooled and there was lacing and braiding on it. And I went, wow, if I could recreate this old world craftsmanship and vintage bags that were today's woman for today's woman with all the pockets and the things we need, right. but then could be made out of this amazing leathers from all over the world, especially Italy. Wouldn't that be awesome? So that's kind of how it started. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. So what was the first product that you created when you decided to make the Patricia Nash handbag brand? It was a tote bag and a saddlebag. I made these two like hand in hand because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And so there's one I call the Barcelona uh -huh. because it was really inspired by saddlebags that I found in a vintage shop in Barcelona. So I thought, okay, I've got to call it that. And then there was this tote bag that um, I created that had this old hardware that was used um, for train car cases. Oh in Italy back in like 150 years ago or something crazy. So, and that one I call the Benvenuto. So yeah. Those were your first ones. So okay. I really love hearing the inspiration behind the brand. So obviously you always wanted to do it. You were kind of collecting and basically you were building your brand without even really knowing it. Tell me some of the inspiration behind the Patricia Nash brand. Well, a lot of it comes from either uh, bags in my mother's closet you know, fashion from old fashioned magazines. I've been obsessed with old movies. You know, I love to watch a good old movie. Um, and I, from my trips abroad, my husband's from England. Um, I've did business in Europe for over like 15 years, going back and forth with different brands. And so I just, I love to walk um, the streets of you know, like a Milan or Paris or something and go into all those old vintage shops, you know, it's kind of like resale shops, right? They're always yeah. got something kind of interesting where those markets on the street and you'd find the most amazing old bags that you wish could tell a story or a shoe, you know, you'd find a shoe and it'd be like a Cinderella shoe, like, oh my gosh, or a print in an old dress, you know, from the 40s or 50s. And I thought, well, I wonder if I could put prints on leather. So, you know, my mind would just, I, I have just, I come, I am so inspired by travels or just nature or old buildings or, you know, um, something in my grandmother's closet, you know, that just kind of history and culture and um, mm -hmm. past. Oh, that's so neat. So you mentioned old movies. I just have a question. What's your favorite old movie? Which one are you the most obsessed with? Well, um, I'm embarrassed to say I probably watched The Sound of Music probably about 15 times. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've seen White Christmas oh. with with Bing Crosby, I think, and who else? Who else? But they have dancing and singing. I love the old singing, dancing movies. 
But my daughter and I, we still to this day can watch, just sit there in, in a rainy day and just watch those great old movies. Oh, that is, that, that is so true. The Sound of Music happens to be one of my all-time favorite <laughs> movies. Okay, so as far as when... We have obviously a lot of customers at QVC. You've also been selling on HSN, which is our sister right. company. Now, have you ever received customer requests for bags and then created them? Yes. Um, we get comments all the time, whether it's, you know, can you make a green leather bag? And I'm thinking, green leather bag? And in fact, I go, okay, maybe we should do that. So, yeah, we get requests for colors, sizes, uh, features. Can you put a pocket here instead of here? I mean, it's very interactive and it's wonderful. And I listen to all of that because at the end of the day, there's a lot of brands out there that are designed by a man or a woman. And if you don't use them and aren't part of that sisterhood, sometimes you can make a great looking bag. But let's face it, if you don't make it functional, comfortable, you know, and to fit you right, you're not going to use it. That is such a good point. And it says a lot, too, when the entrepreneur is actually carrying their own handbags or wearing their own accessories. I mean, that really speaks volumes, I think, for quality right. brand. Oh, I agree. I, I mean, I, w- I wear m- only my product all the time, and uh, I get compliments on it all the time with no one knowing that I'm the brand's sake. And it just makes me feel really good. Oh, that would be a fun experience for sure. Yeah, yeah it is. You actually won a specific prestigious award just this past year. It's the 13th annual IDHA. It's the Iconic Independent Handbag Designers Award. Tell me a little bit about that and what it means in the handbag industry to win such a prestigious award. Well, um, it, well, first it, it felt good because I, I'm not a very um, political person. You know, I'm, I'm like kind of just hunkered down and I'm not like all in the industry knows of everybody. And I, I don't go to all the fashion schools and events and things like that. I, I, um, so I, I've been kind of quietly building my brand. And so when all the attention started, uh, just the last couple of years, it was like, wow, this is, I mean, I guess I kind of realized I, I really made a great brand. Yeah. You know, you just, it's kind of like, I don't take it for granted, but you're just so hard at work all the time. You don't, think of things like that so to be honored number one is very humble humbling um and it was it, it yeah it was a very emotional uh, an emotional night oh that's so amazing did you have like your your family and friends there with you where you had to be there by yourself or what was it like being there well it was really funny because I, you know I didn't want to make a big deal about it with my family and all that and they all surprised me both my kids came to New York my husband and um, I didn't even know my son was going to be there until like the 11th hour when I got back to the hotel to get ready. And there he was. And I was like, what? What is this? So, yeah, we had a we had a beautiful night and we went out to dinner, a late dinner afterwards. And yeah, it was it was it was special. Very special. It sounds special. It sounds kind of like something from a movie. <laughs> I really <laughs> love it. Yeah, it was so, sweet. As far as words of encouragement, you started your handbag company. A little bit later, you had your career, you were very established in it, and then you branched out and you said, I actually want to go out on my own. What advice would you give someone who's saying, all right, I've been in my industry for some time. How do I know when I should step out and try something myself? Or how do you get the inspiration to want to do that? Well, well, first I'd say it's never too late and you're never too old. I mean, uh, just to start a new brand at almost 50 years old that I did, you know, was like, what am I doing? But I got to a crossroads where it was like, okay, you know what? I'm not really interested in what I'm doing anymore for everybody else. I don't really believe in some of these brands anymore. And, you know, they, they, I was, there was things out of my control, like, you know, they didn't market the brand right, or they sold the brand, or they didn't want to do this, or they didn't want to do that. So I I just made a decision that either I've got to go for it or stop complaining and, you know, go on with what you're doing. And I, I, you know, you feel like you're literally taking that big step, you know, you literally feel like you're just, okay, here I go. And you just plunge into it. Uh, But I tell you what, for having the age wow, the difference it's made because I've had all these experiences in business 
that if I would have had this same brand I launched, let's say I'm making this up 20 years ago, I'm not so sure I would have gotten through all the obstacles because I didn't have the experience. Um, I didn't know how to maybe recreate myself every time you needed to because you can't stay still, right? You have to keep no. evolving. Yeah. So I, I think it turned out for the best the way it did. I mean, you have created an extremely prestigious and premium line with all of your pieces. I mean, you started off with bags, obviously. Then right. you created a more breadth of a company. Tell me all the other things that are within the line. Well, we've done footwear. We do like um, some old vintage capes that we just introduced. In fact, we launched them on HSN and sold out like the two minutes. Oh, and cool. so we're bringing them back this next fall, fall 2020. Um, we do a lot of scarves, uh, little accessory pieces. Um, yeah, and then, of course, handbags and backpacks. We started a coated canvas collection. That was for women that maybe wanted to carry it in the rain or, you know, throw it in the bench on a, a baseball field or something. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Just something that's just a really rugged, waterproofish kind of thing. So we did that, and it's doing well. So, yeah, luggage. We do some luggage pieces. We do some men's bags. Um, mm. And uh, men love great leather. And I know that's kind of a generalized comment, but they, I've had more women tell me that they were introduced to the Patricia Nash brand by their husbands or boyfriends or sons who saw my leather on my bags and was so impressed by it that they bought it for that woman in their lives. That's so, yeah. Great. So we started the men's line. <laughs> ah, that is so healthy. And that also shows it's a testament to the brand. It's, it's basically you have a unisex brand here of high premium leathers. I mean, from all over the world. And I love that you do a lot of the traveling yourself. You get inspired where you go. You're famous for your map print that you see yeah. a lot bags tell me a little bit about the story and the history behind that map print you know that it, it, it that one sounds like a movie I was in Milan and I wanted to go find some old periodical fashion magazines like mm -hmm. I had envisioned like what if I could find some vogues from the 1940s and 50s and yeah. or life magazine or something and, and see what they were wearing and just get inspired by flipping through an old magazine so I go into this periodical shop in Milan and there's the shopkeeper and uh, a, a teacher of some kind, and they have this map rolled out on the table, and they're talking about it, and they appear to be arguing, because I don't speak Italian. I, I know enough to be dangerous. Right. <laughs> they, they appear to be arguing about the date of this map. Mm -hmm. And so to make a long story short, it ends up being, you know, like argument between 160 years old and 180, and they can tell because of the, um, the countries that are all part of Italy at that point. And so anyway, to make a long story short, I asked him if I could buy it. And um, he said, yeah. So I ended up buying it. I remember them laughing over how much I paid for it when I left. Um, not, that, not that I thought it was a lot. But um, so I thought I'd just use it on the hang tags, you know, like kind of like a branding mm -hmm. element. And then this buyer in New York, um, a national uh, vice president actually said to me, why don't you put this print? on leather. I thought, wow, that would be amazing if I could do it. Well, it took me two and a half years to figure out how to really perfect it. And this guy, he's um, he's third generation tannery in Santa Croce, Italy. Ooh. And he was so passionate about it that he worked with me. And I went back and forth, back and forth from the States. And we would be there for hours and hours and late into the night. And then I'd go back and get some rest in the hotel. And then we'd come back. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, um, it was really quite an experience. I'll never forget it the rest of my life because now people think it's like my signature print. You know, and uh, they're loving it. You know, it, it reminds people lots of things. You know, some people look at it and they remember their heritage or they think about mm -hmm. Italy and their dreams of going there. Or others just think about travel in general and their experiences. You know, maps have an emotional response to a lot of people. And, and so I never thought of it that way. But now that, that I've experienced it, it really is a, a beautiful uh, piece of art on a map that has true history to it. Well, and you get to carry it around with you and, and it's something that you can pass yeah. down even, you know, an old map, 
keeping that together and not having it kind of fall apart and deteriorate is a lot harder, but a handbag on premium leather, I mean, you could have that for quite some time. Yeah. So that says a lot too. And yeah. I love, love what you said about the history behind it. Continue. I'm sorry, we, we were overlapping a little bit, but you know, we also, I, I forgot to tell you, we're doing jewelry and we do the map on like a cuff with uh-huh. a little clasp on it and women are loving that map on 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 the on the cuff as well so it's all it's just a lot of fun. well it sounds like it's all just coming together and with all of the history and knowledge that you have I feel like it's really just a part of you and it's all just kind of forming as you go yeah. and as you kind of roll down it's like a rough stone rolling moment just chip away at the pieces that are giving you strength and that might be difficult, but then it's smoothing out your whole brand and the whole process. And what a great experience it sounds like. Well, you know, you, you just really uh, made me think of something. One, one of the things that I would always tell people is you have to be authentic. You know, I am who I am. I can't change that. I may be a little overweight. My hair's all messed up because of this coronavirus. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm saying, you know, people, want authenticity. I do too. I want to be part of a brand where it's real. It's actually a woman designing her own things, you know, and um, that there's a purpose or a meaning behind it. I think, aren't we all just wanting to be connected like that and a real, uh, like what you're doing now, I think it's amazing, this court side, Courtney, because you're, you're featuring real stories about all of us. I mean, even what you're doing, you know, and um, we're just talking about it, which is it's awesome to have that um, opportunity to do that because I, I enjoy watching things all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I'm appreciative that you wanted to come on the show and be able to share your stories and your experiences because the openness of our founders is what makes this, I mean, I think so incredible because yeah. the history of every entrepreneur and every single brand, it, it's all different. None of them are the same and they're so unique and I think they're inspiring, you know, so I appreciate the work that you've put into it. And I I wanted to ask, is there a pivotal moment that you have in whether it was you growing up in your youth or maybe a little bit later that you thought, you know, this is really what made me step up or this made me change how I looked at things and kind of evolve into who you are today? Well, you know, I've always been a hard worker. I've always been someone who dreamed of um, doing my own something. And I was always very creative as a kid. I'd always be drawing or painting or cutting out stuff or making cakes or, you know, uh, whatever. I was always busy doing uh, crafty things. So I I knew that I had to do that. I couldn't just sit, you know, and and do something. In fact, when I first started in college, I thought, oh, I I need to be an accountant. Well, that didn't last very long. (laughs) I I learned enough that, thank God I did. Because I was able to apply it to my business, but um, gosh, you know, I just have to always be doing things with my hands. I always have to be inspired. I always have to be just doing something. So, it, there's something being said too. A lot of the crafts now. I mean, you know, we're doing this a lot, but when you're actually able to create something with your hands, whether it's you know in the garden or you're cooking or you're creating handbags. I mean, there's something about the textile experience of touching and creating and like using your your body to do something. I mean, even dance, I would imagine. So, I mean, that experience, I think the creativity that comes with it is so unique. And how do you make time for that? Because I know, I'm sure as a founder, you're having to do a lot of things, accounting and all of that. Like, how do you say, I need to put up some boundaries and I need to work with my hands and I need to do what brings me joy and gives me that passion? Well, I can always tell when it's time. Well, first you have deadlines. So, you know, there there are times when you just have to almost literally lock yourself in your studio and say, no one come in here. Um, but then yeah. there are times when you know it's time because I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not getting anywhere. You know, I'm not being productive mm-hmm. and I'm frustrated or I have too much anxiety or whatever it might be that's not positive. I know, okay time for you to get back into it and get inspired again so that's when I used to do sometimes I just schedule a trip you know and and now I've been doing some local things um uh around and I'm finding I can really get inspired here I planted over 23 plants a weekend after last 
23, two lilac bushes, two oh. um, gardenia um, bushes, uh, like 15 geraniums. I mean, I went crazy, but I felt so good. At the end of the weekend, I feel like I really accomplished something and, 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 you know, I was using my hands again. So yeah, I, uh, it, it's lovely when you just get into the moment of things, you know, just enjoying that, uh, creativity. And I've met so many women that are creative, but they just don't have the confidence in themselves. Right. I, I wish I, I mean, I, I, sometimes they almost make me cry. The mm-hmm. things they bring me when they see me in, in a, you know, personal appearance or something. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're so talented. What are you doing? But they're enjoying it. And that's what they always tell me that, well, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it, but I'm really enjoying it. And that's what, honestly, at this time right now, you know, we're given some boundaries given our circumstances and being able to kind of come into yourself, be creative, find the things that give you joy. I love that even you, you're like, I was gardening. I mean, you planted 23 plants. I just kept going. I was crazy. My nails were a mess. My hands were all cut up. Uh, you know, it was like my husband says, "Why didn't you wear gloves? Why didn't you even think about it?" <laughs> just like I was getting after it. You were just on a roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely a roll. Oh my goodness! So, how can we follow you and stay on top of the brand? Because I know you're at QVC and HSN. Are you on social? Like, where can we stay connected? Absolutely. I do a lot of. Well, I haven't in the in the past really, but on Facebook I do a lot of postings, personal ones. Mm. Um, we actually, since the start of this stay at home, we're, we've been giving away a bag or giving away something every day, just as something kind of fun. And everybody just comments on the personal thing that I posted, you know, like uh, just just different things, you know, like this is a painting in my house. What about you? Or this is, you know, I like to do this. And what do you like to do that? And then just posting personal things. And um, I've had some women tell me that they can't wait every morning to wake up and just take a look at it with their coffee. And so it's, it's nice. Nice. Oh, perfect. So Facebook, we can find you. And obviously we can shop the brand on QVC and HSN. You just type in Patricia Nash and yeah. all of your line will pop up. All the different variations. Yeah. We've got fantastic assortment of product on both QVC and HSN. Um, and then we're on Instagram too. So Instagram's a good place to see some postings. Now, is there anything that you're excited about or that you're bringing forth or you're creating at this time that you want to give us like a little sneak peek or a heads up on? Ah, well, maybe. <laughs> I might just happen to have something right here tomorrow night on QVC. I'm really excited because this is my first uh, big deal. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> and for all of you at QVC, who knows what that is? It's a big deal. Can you see this? So tell me a little bit about it. Isn't it amazing? Well, we've done, and we've got it in, I don't know, a gazillion colors. So I just got this one. Let me see. I'm trying my best to figure out what I'm doing. Oh, you see, know, this see, is all about exploration. Yeah, <laughs> see that detailing on there? Well, we've done a different kind of bag that had the similar detailing, and it's very, very popular. But we wanted to create an exclusive new look for QVC using this technique where this is hand cut out with metallic underneath it, but this is hand cut, tooled, then it's burnished with the different color all by hand. Wow. And then you see all this scalloped edge and this twisted rope. I mean, the stories here are great, but amazing deal on it. So it's a big deal. It's a big right. deal. And yeah. you go to qc.com and just type in big deal or type in like values and you'll see your handbag pop up which is a great yeah. way to shop yeah so it's very fun we're doing that tomorrow night i think at nine we start at nine tomorrow and then the next day we do it at eight so Perfect. yeah oh we're excited to see that thanks for sharing that with us so we can start shopping if we're interested Okay, so is there, is there anything else that you would like to share with those of us who are watching right now? Anything that you just feel like is on your heart or that we would like to know about the brand? I mean, we're just open to hearing anything, especially because this is the time to do it. And we were connecting virtually and, and this yeah. is such a good moment. I'm just glad you gave me that moment. And I appreciate that because it really is an authentic brand. It is from the heart. 
It is with a lot of passion. Um, and I try my best to give it the best, best value I can. Because, you know, our finances, at the end of the day, we're even more concerned, right? But to really have a, an amazing product at a good value that, you know, you can use for years and years, yeah. that's really important to me. It's really important to me. And, you know, I get upset when I see product out there that isn't that kind of caliber for the value. You know, it's like I want to tell everybody, that's not right. Don't buy it. But I don't. But, um <laughs> You know what I'm saying. It just, it just, I, it just feels good to do that. And it's hard to do that. It's hard. I mean, I get told no all the time. Oh, you can't do that. It's going to cost more money. No, you can't do that. So I always have to be in check. But, you know, my heart's there to try to give, you know, these great, amazing designs that inspire you and remind you of your past, but it doesn't break your bank. Exactly. And the fact that we can get like affordable, luxurious, premium handbags or belts or scarves or anything like that from your brand, it, it is. It's like if I'm spending something, spending money right now, it, it needs to be something that I'm going to keep. It's like worth the, the time and investment that I'm going to put in it. And when I receive things right now, it comes straight to my door. I have a little bit of joy. It kind of brings me a little like, oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I must tell you, that's been dangerous for me being part of HSN and QVC because Oh my gosh, I bet I get a package from one of the other companies like three or four times a week. Because yeah. you're so clever of picking out those special things that I'm like, oh, I gotta have that. Yeah. <laughs> that. So anyway, it's great. Well, you're not alone in that, just know. <laughs> There's a lot of us who are, are having that uh, situation That's going right. on. Good. Good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you sharing your stories and the history behind the brand. I know a lot of us are like, oh, I didn't know that. And this is such a great opportunity for us to be able to have you share. So thank you. Uh, thank you for choosing me. I appreciate that. Definitely. Well, definitely go to qvc.com to look at the big deal from Patricia Nash's handbags. It is coming up. So I hope that you're able to snag one before they're gone. So thank you so much, Patricia. And we'll see you next time. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.